This is a video on the initialization sequence, the bootstrap sequence for the Tandy Portable Disk Drive 2. I have a video on the initialization sequence for the Portable Disk Drive 1 as well. That one has a different procedure, so I just wanted to cover this one quickly. You can tell this, this is a TPDD2, and it says right here, Portable Disk Drive 2 on the label. So you need the, the TPDD2, a Model 100, the serial cable, and this utility disk. Now this is a reproduction utility disk, but it includes the catalog number here on the label, as well as the initialization sequence that you'll need to run in BASIC. This is much simpler than the initial program loader needed for the TPDD1, and that's just because the TPDD2 is a little bit smarter in how it handles the bootstrap. So you're going to want to make sure that this write protect is engaged with the hole open, and then insert the disk into the drive with the power off. Close that, then go into BASIC, and we're just going to key in that little initialization sequence. Run com colon 98n1enn. This just tells it to run a bunch of code that it gets over the serial port at the maximum baud rate, that's baud rate 9. So turn this, run, hit enter there, and then turn the disk drive on. And at this point, the disk drive is going to begin sending the initial program loader for DPDD2 up to the computer. And now it's going to pull the file manager off the disk drive. You can see the access light there. And now we have floppy. And again, this is a much quicker and easier initialization sequence than the TPDD1. Now to run the floppy program, all we have to do is come down here, select it from the disk from the menu, and there we have the disk file manager. It's showing our free space in RAM. We can take a look at the files on the disk by pressing F1. This will show us all of the files that are just on the standard, the stock the utility disk. If we were to attempt this initialization procedure without the utility disk, we can go ahead and show that. Run com colon 98n1enn. And now turn the disk drive on. But because we don't have the disk in the drive, it's not going to be able to complete the initialization sequence. And the laptop's just going to sit here because there's nothing for it to run.